very good morning to all of you. Dignitaries on the days, off the days, delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, I greet you all of you on this great occasion because some 38 or 39 years back, I, f as a fresh graduate from engineering college, I entered the industry or the research, uh, Indian Space Research Organization. My first assignment was in the quality and uh, quality uh, division where the external industries, especially with the external industries interacting the uh, quality aspect of our products. So I am really very pleased that also one more part is uh, the, I, the first professional body I joined is with respect to uh, quality which later merged with the NIQR when NIQR formed. So in pr principle, I, the first professional body I joined is uh, NIQR. So I am, uh, when I, whenever any NIQR programs, uh, either in Trivandrum or nationally, uh, it's a great pleasure for me to attend. If you look at the way the things are emerging in the space, the space industry today are the, uh, are all the R&D effects of space is yielding benefit means, uh, this is because the real, the quality culture that had been imbibed because the type of reliability that is required because there is no second chance offered as well as uh, the near 99.999 also will not be sufficient. It will be really 100. When we were uh, lighting the lamp, I, when we are struggling to light the lamp, I was uh, thinking when uh, LBM-3, the launch vehicle which took the Chandrayaan lander up, See, two strap-ons are there. The two strap-ons are to be lighted up. That uh, in nanoseconds sort of a uh, difference, they have to be lighted up. If, if there is er any uh, difference in that, then the uh, launch vehicle will not steer upward because the first few uh, seconds of a uh, launch vehicle is very, very crucial because the huge vehicle which will not have enough power to resist anything. Even a high gust of wind can push it if this uh, lighting is not proper. So there we start. And I am a person who had been involved in inertial sensors and navigation systems for the ISRO's program. So our area of uh, activity starts from that lighting up. That we navigate the launch vehicle to the right orbit the right parameters so that uh, the ultimate goal is achieved. If you look at uh, for a uh, Chandrayaan mission, uh, it is not only the uh, accuracy of the position or uh, more than that, if you imagine there is a globe, in that globe an elliptical orbit will slice the globe at any point. You, you must be, some of, most of you may be aware that we have used the minimum energy concept or the optimum with the what is available, the type of propulsion that is available, with the minimum energy we reached. That's why we took uh, nearly 40 days. So in order to do that, certain orbital parameters have to be achieved on the day of launch. If that launch, we call it argument of perigee, that is certain uh, inclination angles, if the angles are not met, the mission that day itself it can be decided that it cannot be met because it is after 40 days how the dynamics comes into we want to get into a spot where there is a minimum energy transfer from the earth orbit to the moon is possible. So that, that is the type of criticality and uh, reliability that is required in an inertial navigation sensors like gyroscopes and accelerometers. So the type of involvement, it is not physical on inspector type of uh, involvement that is go goes on. It is uh, inherently built in, mentally the quality conscious. It is not only for the quality personnel, but also to the designer or the who has the manufacturers of this uh, sensors. So that on we were able to 
launch the uh, uh, Chandrayaan-3 in the desired orbit. And then the uh, orbit racing maneuvers. Here again, the navigation system plays a major role so that we are very precise and we are able to rise the way we want. See, one thing we would have observed after landing, we have made a hop exercise. You know, basically, this hopping exercise is, is made possible because enough fuel is there. Why enough fuel was left behind is you are able to uh, navigate very precisely, so you are able to um, land it with the lot of fuel left, reserve fuel that is left. So that is a type of accuracy when we want to uh, achieve. See, there is a lot of hot burns, really, with respect to at every situation and uh, then make it uh, right the first time. Now, uh, when it comes to the, uh, we say, inertial uh, na navigation sensors as well as inertial act actuators in a spacecraft, as long as a spacecraft is there, these two things are to be working. So that is a type of 24 by 7 and some of our uh, gyroscopes and actuators they have been working non-stop for 17 years in orbit. You know how this is uh, made possible, the type of precision bearing units and the type of inspection, quality, audit are uh, designed for uh, uh, quality. Those aspects have been built in. So that is why we are able to achieve. Uh, this is uh, some of the, uh, the best examples uh, in the globally also where uh, uh, some of the, uh, the Western, when they have life of 15, 17 years, they have changed the reaction wheel or momentum wheel. Whereas we were able to uh, run for 17 years unattended. So this is a type of uh, uh, reliability we are able to achieve primarily from the conscience of uh, the quality uh, mind that is what is there. So now uh, another important uh, thing is now in the Chandrayaan, the last mile, or the last uh, 15 uh, minutes of terror, what we say, there, there is uh, absolutely no time or no source, I mean, scope for any uh, deviations. And uh, we all know this only, but the people who are behind, we know there is even some 24 hours prior to onwards, there should not be any uh, deviations or any observations. You know, the thing is, any navigation system uh, is like the starting point. Suppose if a Chennai Mofisil bus stand, exactly lat long of Mofisil bus stand has to be given, then the navigation system will do it perfectly. In Moon, that what, how to define that Mofisil uh, station or that point, how to define, how accurately you define. Any navigation, initially if it is defi designed uh, defined wrongly, then it cannot really navigate. You take it somebody to Madurai and tell this is uh, Chennai, and uh, obviously uh, nobody can navigate. So that was a big challenge. That is in uh, Moon, we need to define the starting point of this activity. See, this starting point of activity in a Earth-bound spacecraft, we can do this by GPS or our Navic and all those uh, elements are there, we will be able to define. Whereas in the moon, see that uh, uh, facility doesn't exist for us. So no aided definition of a single point. What is uh, uh, done is really the, the spacecraft is tracked and it is propagated for the next 24 hours and, uh, and, and predicted that at this time, exactly nanoseconds point, this will be at this point, it will be predicted. So now that predicted fellow has to be in the same way. If for some reasons, sir, there is a control, extra thrusters, firing, etc., the position marginally changes. Then your starting point will not be accurate. So therefore, the type of activity, the 24 hours prior to that, it has gone through flawless. That means there is not, not just one sensor, not one actuator, every system, Every electronic systems, the uh, onboard computer, every system should do a flawless job. Then only your prediction 
uh, of where you will be at this moment of time will come true. So what we have got is without a zero defect. See, this is a zero defect when you say the performance zero defect, what we could achieve, and the starting definition was so good. At this point, I should uh, uh, remind you, see, internationally, most of them, when wherever they want to land, from that land, then the point of what they intend to land, they are more than a kilometer or few kilometers off, and the best had been uh, Chang'e 3, the Chinese one, is within, just within a kilometer. You know the type of uh, uh, performance, what we have achieved is few meters. So <laughs> that, that is the beauty of uh, the uh, effort that goes in. See, it is not only uh, research in development, it is also in research and activity in the, to build in quality and demand the reliability when you really need it. So that is the type of confidence that what goes in. So uh, because I am, uh, I can proudly say I had been leading uh, as a, a director of course the quality aspects of a mechanical quality engineer, electronics quality engineer, or an electrical or optical, optics and uh, software. And uh, uh, one of the best software quality system what we have uh, made ourselves involved, I mean available with us and the type of uh, chips, IC chips what we design and the software that firmware that goes in and all that has gone to a thorough mill of multi-level quality uh, audit and independent verification. So th that the culture that really helped us to really do all this. See the algorithms to do this is one thing and the implementation to do that under all circumstances and land. In uh, uh, Chandrayaan 2, if for that small minor thing, it would have also landed very accurately. But uh, there are certain adaptability features in the software what that has been now built so that any minimal variations also it will be able to adapt of the type of in other words, a little reduced form of artificial intelligence that is built into the sensors and the systems. So when, uh, when we really land, the, we would have seen at the uh, last mile, there is a small retargeting, few meters. That is a hazard detection camera. That what it takes is, it visually it looks at it, and now it had to decide what exactly is a hazard, what it is a boulder, what is the uh, element where uh, crater, edge of a crater, all that. So those uh, definitions uh, has to be decided slightly with an intelligence because the lighting conditions will not be identical to what earlier what you have seen. So this sort of uh, uh, artificial intelligence, but you know now artificial intelligence, huge research activity is going on huge achievements are being uh, done. But one thing I would like to highlight is the algorithms that in the run in the ground, that cannot be run. Huge computers are not available on board to do that. So you have to have innovative algorithms such that the decisions are made, they are made right and made in time to take the decisions. So it had done and you see the most uh, hazard free location it was able to land. So this is a uh, type of uh, effort that goes not only in the hardware, not only in the design, not only in the fabrication, but also in the software, and also in the software, uh, innovative ideas, whereas they have to be deterministic. When it comes to AI, uh, there is uh, a risk element is uh, they are not 100% deterministic as on today to the best of my knowledge. So how the, this is the biggest challenge that is going to come to the uh, uh, QC or quality personnel is in particular the software quality personnel and the system quality personnel is the behavior with uh, AI enabled systems, the deterministic way which way you will evaluate. So the type of evaluation 
concepts that has to so i put it as a challenge to the uh, uh, quality community to really rise to the occasion how do we evaluate a system which is enabled with artificial intelligence because in order to uh, really test it deterministically so this is one emerging area because now there is a great rush towards uh, the aa because in manufacture aa has found its place or in um, medical field of course it is uh, uh, greatly coming up but in order to evaluate a system with the aa enabled so that is the biggest challenge that you need to really uh, face so uh, that is about the chandra next uh, mission what the whole country is going to be excited about is a space robotic mission uh, it is the uh, uh, before the human space space flight program before an indian flight to space uh, unmanned flights are planned as a prelude to the uh, final test in that a yeah, ai enabled view mitra a yeah, half humanoid i am very proud that is from our own uh, isro inertial system unit uh, is designed developed and that has been qualified and is ready to fly probably in march or april so that uh, this see you know why i earlier told there is a big challenge for ai pers uh, quality personnel to uh, evaluate uh, ai enabled system so we have since we have made now we, this is a process what we are uh, going through because it has been ai enabled it can speak it can respond it can respond to from orbit it can respond and uh, see and uh, give a response and all that activity uh, switch operations or any human what it he can do a human I mean, an astronaut can do yeah this humanoid uh, humanoid will be doing so in order to evaluate it in ground before we launch that is the biggest challenge uh, the designers the quality personnel of isro we are uh, on to the job so when we work on that only we are the type of uh, uh, the quality Uh, satisfaction what we get from our uh, other systems so we are yet to reach to that level because the non deterministic way of uh, artificial intelligence enabled when i said non deterministic yeah normal deterministic system means if you input is uh, x you expect y that should be the y even if it is uh, millions of times whereas non deterministic uh, systems there can be a few occasions the way will be a, yeah, there will be a variation in the way so therefore uh, there is a great challenge not only in the designers of ai enabled systems now uh, we have put in lot of effort there again that ai systems uh, cannot be bulky computation intensive it cannot be and it has to do with the functions very fast a dynamic vehicle uh, it has to do uh, very fast now the fast is like one second is a slow for a rocket but for a lander etc one second was reasonably okay during the uh, that is why you would have seen and it is hovering a one or two seconds it hovered and made the right decisions and then it uh, it lands so that is the uh, type of uh, uh, systems when you are having in a dynamic environment more dynamic environment you need to uh, really have decisions very fast deterministic decisions conclusions very fast so those area evaluating is a challenge so uh, even though right now there is an auto program i wish this view mitra once once it is uh, flown into the space soon one day we indians we will celebrate that a humanoid walks into the moon surface uh, as a representative of india <laughs> with all the capabilities of a human being and uh, all the and the more sustainable uh, capability even if he can leave behind and come back and uh, uh, this is can work for us that sort of uh, uh, capability we are uh, building and uh, the the role of industry and the industries quality uh, personnel's uh, knowledge on or the demands of the uh, industry uh, i mean uh, such a space program so those are all very important that is why naqr had been a very part and parcel of uh, uh, our activity in trivandrum 
that is very powerful very interactive very active um, i mean organization or uh, body that uh, enables the quality culture in our uh, space engineers so i really very thankful to the organizers for uh, inviting me and uh, uh, share some of my views on the criticalities in a robotic missions like uh, chandrayaan 3 as well as the future uh, future uh, robotic missions of isro thank you jai hind our appreciation can be felt only with the